Hey guys, so in this video we're going to go through just a quick observation inspection of the, the neck or cervical spine. So if I get Karina to set her around facing away. Um, so just general things that I would look for really when I've got any neck patient. Um, obviously first of all we're just going to have a general look at, at posture and look at for example shoulder heights. So I would look at shoulder heights. Um, I would look at the neck itself. So I'd be looking for um, in Glenn we're just discussing things like creases, not with someone like Karina, but with older people you might see creases that would suggest areas of hinging or areas of motion. Some people have got like a dowager's hump, so you'd be looking at that sort of thing, so just looking generally at that CT junction. Looking at the head to see whether it's um, side tilted one way or the other, so left and right um, side bend. Um, with, um, with certain patients obviously ideally you have the hair up, so you might get um, Karina to actually, you know, with a patient to wear the hair up so you can actually see the full neck there as well. Um, again, the other thing I'd be looking for is any redness around there, so looking for um, autonomic changes, so redness, any sweat, excess sweating, things like that. Any change in, um, so lumps and bumps, so any deformity around there, um, any uh, bruising or any, any discoloration. So they're all just little things you'd be looking for with any, any patient of the neck. Um, also look at from the side as well, so if we turn to your side. So again looking from the side it would just be looking generally again at, at more posture, looking at things like the poking chin position, whether there's that head forwards position, just doing that quick plumb line. We talked about this on our full observation so you can always check that out on the, on the um, site. But just for the neck we'll just be looking at that plumb line. The other thing I would look at as well is looking at any uh, lumps around the throat, so looking for where there's obviously infection um, and the, in, in terms of those lymph nodes, uh, whether there's, those glands are swollen and therefore could be an infection. Um, and then I would also look from the front, so I just would look, again, just generally at the front, looking at things like your shoulder heights, looking at the collarbones, just looking for any abnormalities that you might um, think are relevant and that you could, you know, would take place as part of the whole clinical picture. So we get you wrapped around again, Karina. So I don't know, Glenn, what, anything else you'd add on top of that in terms of just observation and selection stuff? Yeah, very similar with my approach. I mean, um, I think we'll go into palpation in more depth in another video, but this mm -hmm. is a really good opportunity to just put your hands on the patient and, and see if anything jumps out. And I think specifically for this area, um, scalene, sternocleidomastoid, just having a feel in, in that position, see is one side more tense than the other, which I think often is the case, especially if they're on computer workers with the mouse yeah. hand or if they're doing lots of driving with the gear stick hand. Um, also, putting your hands on the shoulder blades, again, more, we'll go into more depth on this when we look at the shoulder, but is there one side that's particularly more protracted or retracted than the other? You can get a nice um, gauge of that with your hands on the shoulder blade. And then just coming off the um, border of the scapula and just pressing into levator scap and really important muscle I think for the neck area. Mm. Is it tender? Is it tight? And um, as we said we'll go into more depth on assessing that in another video but I think it's good to get in the habit of just palpating at that initial observation stage as well. Yeah absolutely. So that's just a quick um, observation and inspection of the cervical spine.